Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman, and it's Azure Friday. You know, migrating large volumes of unstructured data to the cloud is complex and often time consuming. Today, I'm going to learn all about how to demystify storage migration with Azure Data Box Service and Azure Storage Mover today on Azure Friday. Hi, I'm Scott, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Anusha Subramanian. How are you? I'm doing good, Scott. How are you? I am very well, and I'm excited to learn about moving big bunches of data in the cloud. Sometimes I've heard this term sneaker net, where sometimes it's faster just to hand someone a disk drive than it is to try to upload it myself. Absolutely, you're right. Uh, yeah, we'll talk through you know how migrating large amounts of data is a complex problem. Um, takes a lot of time, resources, and cost uh, for our customers, but it need not necessarily be that way. And we'll talk through a guided approach to sort of break this down and really make it very simple, and also a few services that can really help you get there faster and quicker. I like it. Where do we start? So we start with um, you know what we call a very guided migration experience that uh, we've put together for our customers. So it's a stepwise process that customers can follow and really simplify the whole process, right? So you start with discovering your sources, looking at what you really have on premise, um, whether it's you know um, a, a object, file, block storage. Uh, how is this data stored? Then we move to assessing how the data is actually accessed, right? And this is a very important step because it's not just what data you have, but how big is it? What's the composition? And how is this data used uh, today? Uh, and so on, right? And now that we've had the source sort of figured out, then we move to the targets. Like, where does the data actually go? And it's it need not always be one is to one. That's an important thing to remember. So the different pieces can sort of mix and match into the number of different target storage services that we have in Azure today, right? Does it, um, does it matter the, the flavor of the data? Like the data might be gigabytes of CSV files. It could be uh -huh. raw movie footage. Uh, it could be just tiny, tiny loose files, or it could be a giant data lake. Right. Yeah. No. It it it, it does matter. And uh, you, one of the important things to you know think about is how is the data accessed and used. If you're just storing it for let's say long term retention, then that's an easy choice, right? You just put it in a cold or an archive tier. But if it's something that uh, requires a lot of uh, is attached to an application that is very high I/O and high throughput, then you got to think about where will you store the data such that it is accessible that way. So there is there are technical considerations and there are cost considerations as well. And customers need to think about both. Uh, and it's important to do this right upfront because once your data is in Azure, then re-architecting everything is a very time and cost consuming affair. Right. So um, moving further down this journey, once you've covered your sort of sources, you know where the targets are going to be in Azure. The next step is really to sort of build a migration strategy. Right. Um, how long do you want? Are you OK for the data to take to move from source to destination? Um, are you OK with downtime? Right. Do you have any constraints? Are there any regulatory requirements to think about? So all of these things, these factors sort of go into building your migration strategy. And once you have that framework, Aimed, then you move to the next step for actually picking the right migration tools, right? Which is a culmination of sort of all of the analysis that you've done so far. And here is where we have a number of um, uh, Azure managed services that are readily available to help customers, right? Uh, to help uh, move large uh, lift and shift amounts of uh, data, whether it's on-premises or from other clouds into Azure. We also have some ISV solutions that customers can use, and we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, later. Once the migration is done, the last step is to then do your post-migration checks. Uh, if you need to resync uh, the data, then you need to go and do that, and then you do the final cutover. So it's it's really breaking it down into a series of different steps uh, helps simplify the whole process end to end. All right, that sounds good. I think that point of planning up front, right, measure twice, cut once, is very very yep. important when you're moving large amounts of data. Yep. Yep. One of the services that we are going to focus on today is um, 
uh, an improvement in the Azure Data Box service, right? So we recently announced the next generation Data Box devices, which is something that I'm personally very excited about. So these devices support um, large lift and shift moves with upgraded capacities of 120 terabytes and a 525 uh, terabyte form factor as well. So if you think about it, you're packing more than half a petabyte into like a form factor of a small carry-on suitcase, really, right? Um, there are a number of performance improvements. These devices support up to 100 gig uh, network connections. Security improvements, we have double encryption with hardware-based encryption right off the box and an additional layer of you know BitLocker encryption if customers do need it. These are also ruggedized devices. So they're um, designed to you know operate in a wide range of operating conditions uh, and also to withstand all of the sort of shock and vibration that uh, happens during the transport, but your data is absolutely safe. Uh, these devices are now GA and customers have already been using them to move several petabytes of data in the regions that you see. And we're working very hard to sort of roll this out to many more Azure regions uh, worldwide. So customers will find it super easy to do their lift and shifts into Azure. That is so cool. And I assume that you you, you need to reuse them. So you have to you know, kind of like in, you encrypt the data, but you have to then torch it, clear them out, zero them out multiple times using, I'm sure, appropriate secure mechanisms so that they might be safely reused. Absolutely. Yeah. Every order ends with uh, the data on these devices being securely erased as per NIST standards and then is repurposed for uh, another order. So it's it's a very seamless process, highly automated end to end for customers to be able to move uh, large scale data into Azure. That's so cool. I know that you're shipping them somehow, but I just imagine someone sitting in the middle seat in coach with a half a petabyte of data in their lap. It's just, you know, with their hugging their data and sending it into Azure. That's so cool. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've spoken a little bit about, you know, offline migrations, but typically the preference for most customers is to do it online when you do have, you know, the available um, sort of network bandwidth. So here is where we talk about the Azure Storage Mover Service, which is a relatively new, fully managed uh, cloud migration service, right? So it's very simple for customers to set up. Uh, it's as simple as, you know, they set up a cloud resource and agents running close to where the actual data is. Uh, and the agents do the work of uh, pulling the data from the source and into your destination storage accounts in Azure. Now, this is a vastly improved experience as opposed to running, uh, let's say, your own scripts, because you get a lot of benefits right off the box. Uh, things like, you know, intelligent job management, monitoring, bandwidth uh, management, a host of benefits for customers to make it really easy to move data online when they do have the available network bandwidth. And one of the features that I'm very excited to talk to you about today is uh, this new capability in Storage Mover to help move data from uh, AWS S3 into Azure Blob Storage. And here's a quick demo for you know, how we can go ahead and do this. It's a very simple process with just a few steps. So we start with connecting to the data source, right? And we configure Azure Arc uh, to do this, which allows you to securely authenticate to your AWS account, right? So in Azure Arc, we're going to go first and create multi-cloud connectors. And here is where we connect our AWS account. We provide the account ID and we select the region. Now, it's important to ensure that there are two solutions enabled. There's a data management solution and an inventory solution. Uh, both are checked, right? And once we've done that, we now come back and then we create the source endpoint. And this is going to be the S3 bucket where you want to pull your data from. So let's go ahead there. We select AWS S3 as the protocol. We select the connector that we just created. And then we pick which S3 buckets we want to pull the data from. And once that's done, we now come back to the mover uh, page and create a project here. If you have an existing project, you can always go ahead and use that, create a new job. Right, uh, and here is where you can monitor what's happening once um, the copy kicks off. Now, under a migration job, you can select cloud to cloud as the migration uh, type, and you select the source endpoint that you just created. And in your destination, you would put in your storage account and containers where you want the data to end up, right? And that's pretty much it. And once you're done, you can start monitoring the jobs right here, and the data is moved uh, securely, and that's our top priority always. Now, looking at that, it, it appeared that a job is a collection of multiple endpoints. Is that a fair statement? So you have mm -hmm. a migration job, which is a conceptual bucket 
for yep. a job. And then you say, well, we're going to get from these three source endpoints to that one endpoint here and these here. Good. And you, you can pull from all over. It's very diverse and very heterogeneous. That's right. Yep. Yep. It's a very easy way for customers who are looking to do these sort of uh, migrations to get their data and consolidate it all in Azure. And Storage Mover is a great way to help you get there. That's really cool. That that seems like you've got all the tools you need to do a big, complicated, you know, multi-endpoint migration. You know, Scott, even with all of the guidance and the tools available, sometimes it can be overwhelming for customers just to know where to start, right? And that is where we have a new capability that we've introduced in Copilot that we can now go take a quick look at. So it's as simple as just coming to the Azure portal and you click start um, from the Copilot button right here. Just ask a simple question like, hey, how do I move you know large amounts of data into Azure? And Copilot now helps you through the exact same guided process that we spoke about at the start uh, today uh, to help you decide, right? So I'm going to say, um, do I want to move data to files or blob? I don't know. Help me decide. How often will you transfer data? Let's say this is a lift and shift scenario. That's what we've been talking about today, right? Um, do you have network bandwidth constraints? No, I don't. And there you go. Copilot tells me the storage mover is uh, my go-to service and I can just go create a mover resource from right here. So it's it's a very handy little friendly neighborhood Copilot for you, know, you to go uh, chat with. And just in a few clicks, you know uh, how to get started. In that addition really to cool. all of these... Uh, we also have um, tie-ups with you know a couple of ISVs like Comprise, Atempo, Data Dynamics, and Serata uh, that can help customers do their entire migration completely free of cost. If your scenario is very specialized and the tools and services that we spoke about today don't really cover your scenario. Okay, so there's really just no excuse. Like if you have data, there's some way to get it there. Whether we have to put Absolutely. it in a box and fly it to you. Or you walk through Copilot, it'll explain to you what are the options. We can get your data moved into Azure. Absolutely. Yep. Migration is not as hard a problem as it sounds. And there are ways to really help your data get there into Azure. Very cool. Now, where do I learn about this if I'm a customer watching this episode? So a great place to start would be the Azure Storage Migration Solutions uh, page. And this is constantly being updated with you know, new information as we update our products. And this is a great place for customers to start. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. All right. I've been learning how to demystify storage migration with the Azure Data Box service and Azure Storage Mover today on Azure Friday. 